Hey, welcome to Rasputin's Castle. Man, we're going to be looking at a really oldie but goodie today. This is a, a traditional Congress knife made by Wade and Butcher, um, Sheffield, England. Genuine uh, tortoise shell, and it's just absolutely gorgeous. And if you really like to see a closer look at this knife, go ahead and check out the video. Hey, uh, welcome back to the Fortified Castle. Today we're going to be talking about this uh, Congress knife. Before we do, I just want to thank all of my viewers for the support, the comments, sharing videos, shout outs, all of that. I just um, really appreciate you all. I would probably do these videos if nobody watched them, but it's nice to have the support um, with the video, <clears throat> and it helps me to produce better videos. I read your comments and um, try to adapt and improve my videos because of it. So I want to thank all my viewers. Uh, bonjour, privet, guten tag, hola, and ciao to my foreign friends. And today we're going to be looking at this really cool knife. I know you can't wait to see it. It is um, three and a half inch four blade Congress knife. And that's uh, a little over eight and a half centimeters for my European friends. And um, genuine uh, tortoise shell scales on this knife it is just absolutely gorgeous traditional folder made the traditional way and it is just absolutely fantastic so let's open her up <clears throat> and you can see here it's a wade and butcher arrow maltese uh, trademark uh, with the B in the circle, standing for butcher, at the end of the arrow. That trademark dates to uh, 1819, I think was the first time that they used it. And <clears throat> there were a number of trademarks used on these uh, knives. I'm not going to get into a um, history video on this knife, but I will tell you that um, this knife was produced by William and... Uh, Samuel Butcher, WNS Butcher, and so uh, WNS Butcher's uh, mark on uh, Bowie knives are uh, really valuable. They produced a lot of them and brought them into the United States in the Civil War era. And um, look at that swedge, hammer forged. These blades are all done the old-fashioned way. And um, you can hear a nice walk and talk on here, too. So um, there was an affiliation with uh, Robert Wade <clears throat> and um, the Butcher Brothers. Um, when Robert Wade passed away, um, I think the um, Butcher Brothers kind of looked out after the family and continued on the business <clears throat> and probably as many knives as you see at uh, uh, WNS Butcher you'll see as Wade and Butcher so they use the trademarks equally nice bar shield here sunk down in there perfectly done just perfect pen work there get a shine on them and um, Wade and Butchers were very popular in the United States. They flooded the United States with inexpensive razors. Uh, but they were quality built. Um, people liked them. And um, they produced a lot of other things too. So I'm not going to get into that history a whole lot. But... Um, They produced uh, knives up until 1959, 
I would date this knife post World War II, uh, between 1945 and 1959, and I would uh, kind of favor the 50s for this knife, the build on this knife. That's when I think it was done. Top squares kind of gird up a little there. Everything else is really nice, so. Whoop, there you go. Really nice work. All right, so that's a Wade and Butcher. Good old vintage knife. Uh, let's say, least, least uh, 60 years old. Maybe 70, maybe 80. Hard to tell, really hard to tell with this knife. And I um, hope you enjoyed the video. Hope you found it informative. And really appreciate you guys for your support. Again, thank you.